Hi guys, I uh, just thought a bit of an update uh, this is my current 64-bit magnetic core memory project which is almost finished and probably the next thing I do is uh, power it up. Um, I'll put some photos on Hackaday and whatnot and it's only recently that I've decided to actually mount uh, the processor board and power supply in the actual unit so it wasn't going to be that high. Uh, but I've got you at the Texas Instruments uh, H bridge, they call them quad half H bridge chips. Uh, don't know why they call them that, maybe because you set each state of a pin. Uh, the resistor board down the bottom. Uh, you've got um, the sense receiver module down the bottom, which is hidden. And I haven't wired up the SMA connectors for the sense loop yet. That was probably the last thing to be tested. And uh, 474HC164 shift registers and 274HC595 shift registers that are latching uh, hidden under there and they control the enable pins and the bottom four control the uh, the actual bit states for the H-bridge drivers and so this is the little plug that uh, provides current uh, to drive the address lines uh, for the Texas Instruments chips uh, and it's got its own uh, 7805 regulator and there's another 7805 here and that drives the microcontroller and powers all the logic as well um, so uh, the, the core memory there will butt up closer the IDC connectors are underneath so when it's actually connected uh, it'll get very close to the rest of the module which will have uh, some little covers on top which I've made here. Uh, this one's actually copper coated copper and this one's copper coated brass and then there's a little uh, cover for the front uh, and then this is the a little test jig that I made uh, which is to test all the addressing and you've got your X and Y well the bottom row of LEDs uh, the Y lines should really be in a vertical row but it's not the layout of the board uh, but in the end I should see a scan from left to right and then left to right for the uh, the Y lines. And uh, of course there's two LEDs for every wire because the uh, wire can have two states that can be positive or negative at each end. So uh, two LEDs connected opposite polarity uh, for each channel. Uh, it should show each state or completely off uh, when both LEDs are off for a channel. That module has the same connector as the core memory and plugs straight in in place of the core memory disregarding the sense line. Uh, the sense line is shielded along this brass rod and into the sense receiver which has a copper shield. I decided to borrow Wayne Holder's arrangement for actually driving current using a, a Texas instrument chip uh, SN754410 uh, and, and he's got a side up driving a one bit core but it, it is the uh, XY uh, address lines through it and a sense loop so it, it is fully expandable and uh, it has been demonstrated with your scope screenshot so uh, you can see a positive and negative pulse and the current pin driven through the address lines and it looks like a little bit of signal noise whenever a line is switched off and this time uh, you're, um, you'd get no pulse because the core was probably switched to the direction that it was already set uh, which is the fundamental principle uh, and there you go anything from there I suppose you can check out on the page but uh, I find it just by typing in core memory and it's a, a one bit ferrite core memory experiment. Uh, the pick here is 16F628A uh, 2K and I'm running at a 24 megahertz, which is slightly overclocked and I've never had any trouble with that before. And the logic 
uh, control and the sense line is uh, all done with this these six wires and one of them is an earth uh, so the four logic lines there I don't like this ugly loom arrangement so I'm, I think I'm going to actually have room to fold these lines back around underneath over the top of those logic chips and then come straight out the other side so or even over the top of the microcontroller so then it's under the, the cover so um, yeah I just don't like that big ugliness Hi right, guys, I'm in bed with a sore back, so I thought it'd be a good uh, time to explain how I did the serial interface for the core memory uh, with the objective of using uh, minimal control lines possible connected to the microcontroller. Uh, so I've got 474HC164, uh, your ordinary shift registers that are non-latching, and then two 74HC595 latching shift registers, and they're all daisy-chained uh, data input straight to the uh, 74HC164 so if you want to write to one of the latching shift registers you'll first be you'll be writing it at the beginning of, of an array and uh, it'll first flow through all of these until you set a bit here so you really have to write 48 bits before doing anything uh, these bottom two shift registers control the enable pins for the TI chips that drive the address lines in the core memory and the top four chips here, uh, your 32 bits are the state bits for each end of each H bridge and there's only half the number of enable pins because one enable pin controls both sides of a H bridge in the, the Texas Instrument chip. So uh, the idea is uh, first of all in the microcontroller software to decide which enable pin you're going to scan first which should be the first one so you'll only want one of these pins active high or high. Uh, so the first 16 bits of the 48 bit array that you're going to send uh, you'll have one bit set and then in the next 32 bits for the state control pins you should have selected a state for each end of a wire so there'll be a 0 and a 1 uh, somewhere in here and the rest are irrelevant because uh, I'm taking the incredibly inefficient method of writing a whole 48 bits just to set one bit of the core memory um, that could be made a lot easier uh, by separating the data and you could load all these up with the states that you need on every pin and then just simply rotate one bit through the enable pins and that would be a, a very quick way to handle it but uh, as I said yeah the objective was to get uh, the minimal pins possible and also I don't mind the whole thing running slow for, for demonstration purposes um, so once you're, uh, you'll have an enable pin, uh, one of these enable pins set to a 1, uh, then it'll be latched, uh, so the actual pin goes high and the current drive is activated for that wire, uh, depending on which 0 and 1 you have set here, will be the current direction, and then you'll uh, wait your latch time, however long you're going to have the line active, and then clear and latch again. Uh, and that will actually lower the, the uh, pin state for the enable pin uh, so that's a, a very slow way to load but a quick way to turn the line off once you're finished with it um, as I said we've got uh, 48 bits here to control a 64-bit core memory which seems a bit clumsy uh, we can actually divide the 74HC595 in two because you have your storage register which rotates through as you send data and the output pin will carry through to the input pin and it'll keep it rotating through forever when you latch you have another 8-bit output register here so we could call these another 8 bits which are still in the chip somewhere just not accessible to us so we actually have 64 bits of memory in hardware to control a 64-bit core memory um, which I thought was amusing because uh, yeah, I could have done it another way and enabled every pin together and have every uh, bit state set to zero except for a one somewhere where we want it to control one wire 
but uh, I wasn't sure if there'd be any glitch or, or anything like that on the one on the zero pins. I just didn't want to turn all enable pins all at once. I wasn't sure what noise you'd get. So it seemed uh, yeah, it just seemed sensible to use an extra two chips just to for the peace of mind, knowing that you're only going to flick one enable pin at a time, and so you're only going to have one uh, address line or two that you want driven at a time to write the memory. So I think that uh, explains that, and uh, I'll get to the rest of the video.